Welcome. I am going to open up a public hearing on Senate Bill 1090. Leslie. Madam Chair, Senate Bill 1090 maintains Oregon on Pacific Daylight, Pacific Daylight Time for the 12 months of the calendar year, except for the portion of Oregon in the Mountain Time Zone upon enactment of federal law allowing states to maintain, maintain daylight saving time. Okay. It maintains Oregon on Pacific Standard Time for the 12 months of the calendar year, except the portion of Oregon in the Mountain Time Zone. If necessary, changes to federal law allowing states to maintain daylight saving time are not made by December 1st, 2033. The Dash 2 Amendment replaces the measure. It establishes a single time zone in Oregon and maintains Oregon on Pacific Standard Time for the 12 months of the calendar year. Thank you, Madam Chair. Thank you so much. Senator Thatcher and Representative Lively, I don't know who, I think Senator Thatcher might want to go first. I don't know. Doesn't matter. <laughs> you guys certainly go first. Work it out. <laughs> we'll duke it out up here. Hi, I'm Senator Kim Thatcher. I represent District 11. And Senate Bill 1090 was very well uh, spilled out. In fact, it, I'm testifying to the Dash 2 amendments. Okay. Very simple. Um, let's just move Oregon to the uh, standard time. And we're not going to worry about the previous actions that are falling apart right now. And I'll go into that a little bit. So um, it would just keep us on standard time throughout the state, throughout the year. And it would take those parts of the, the mountain, you know, that are in mountain time now, it just move them to standard time, their, their standard time as well. So it wouldn't put them on the same time as Oregon. It would leave them an hour ahead, I guess. <laughs> but they would be on mountain standard time instead of Pacific standard time. But we would all be on standard time. Make sense? No. No. Okay. Tell me, well, give me the. <laughs> tell me what we are now. Right now, part of our state, like Ontario, I'm sure yeah. Senator Hansel would know um, better than I, but there are parts of Eastern Oregon that are on the same time as Idaho, yeah. which is Mountain Standard Time, because they have, they're real close to a border and they have more to do with Idaho than probably closer to any you know, other Oregon town. So it made sense for them to be on mountain time. Okay. The rest of our state's on Pacific time. Now, right now we're on Pacific daylight time. And this would move us to, uh, to be on Mount, or it's not mountain time, but uh, Pacific standard time. So that when we fall back in the fall, if, if this should pass, we would stay there. We would not be flipping back and forth during the spring and then back in the fall and then forward in the spring and back in the fall. Does that make sense now? I think so. Oh, okay. <laughs> I, think, I think so. I think so. Um, okay. That's, just, that's it. Okay. That well, no, does? I mean, it's just, it's just that um, it, it's difficult. I don't know about you. My, my email inbox fills up with folks saying, why is this still a thing? Why are we still having to change times, especially in the, the, the springtime when everybody's having to get up early, everybody's cranky, everybody's tired. Everybody, it's really hard on people, and it's hard on families with babies and, and pets. They don't care what time it is. Um, it's, it's just a matter of just trying to keep things standard. So um, I, I hear that people want to stop the, the clock change and um, a lot of people had expressed a preference for keeping on daylight savings time so just a little background we did back in 2019 pass a bill senate bill 320 and we were working with washington and california at the time uh, to just kind of as a block be able to go to the the u.s department of timekeepers i guess <laughs> the transportation i think it is um it's been a while since i've looked at that and it, as a block of states say we want to stay on standard time well california has since kind of fallen off into the ocean as you as you <laughs> i don't know how to explain it in that they they just dropped the ball. They just dropped the ball. So we are working with other surrounding states. We're working with Washington, uh, Idaho, and um, especially because there are they have, would have an interest in in keeping at the same time that Oregon is on, as well. And or uh, California has expressed uh, interest in the past on maybe just doing standard time. Fine, we'll just let them do <laughs> whatever they they want to do. But we're working on that. Um, and if it comes up that Congress actually does make this time change available to daylight savings time, and that's something we want to revisit. We can revisit it. But for now, that's the proposal is just to leave us on, on standard time year-round. So that, that, that's it. So we would n no longer spring forward or fall back? We would no longer spring forward. We would fall back one time, and that would be it. Got Understood. Okay. Okay. 
Okay, that makes sense. I got you. Okay, hey. all right. I was <laughs> okay. Senator Hansel. <clears throat> Since my entire northern boundary of my district yeah. borders Washington, it'd be very, very, uh, I just couldn't imagine if there are an hour difference as much, and particularly a Portland, Vancouver metro area, if mm -hmm. you got half and half. Yeah. So is there any, still any connectivity to Washington? Or are we just going to do it? Uh, the proposal here do it and if they want to join us they can what's what's the status here? it um right now the bill doesn't specify hooking ourselves to them um we could add that we could amend that but we are working with their um legislature on that as well because it, yeah it would make sense there and then as well as spokane and you know northern idaho kind of, they would be interested in that as well i'm sure well northern idaho is on the same time we are yeah only because southern of idaho by ontario is <laughs> Yeah. My my question is, they've already adjourned, so they can't do anything. Right. Now. They would not. They would not be able to do anything until the spring. But this would only work if Senator Hensel. It only works if Congress gives us approval to do it. So. We wouldn't be doing anything. So it doesn't really matter that the legislatures have adjourned right now. Uh, let me no, ask. Okay. No, Just I think that's right. Hold on. No, really? Hold on. For I daylight savings time, we would have to have Congress, but um, to stay on standard time, oh. just like Arizona was able to do, they're kind of this little I island thought, out on their own in the mountain time zone. Okay. They stayed on standard. They had to get federal approval they, to do that. They might have to, but it's a lot easier than doing the daylight standard. I'm, I don't know. There's people coming behind me that really are experts on, the, oh, on that. Okay. And maybe right. even Representative, right. Representative Lively, know, so. Lively. Go ahead. Thank Let's you. Hear about it. Uh, Madam Chair, members of the committee, my name is John Lively. I am a state representative from House District 7, which is Springfield. Uh, as a precursor to why I'm here to support this, uh, several years ago, I started receiving a lot of communications from citizens in my community about this time switching back and forth, which surprised me because I don't get a lot of people asking me in my community to take specific actions. But it seems like the clock, clock switching back and forth is one of those. So I was involved with the efforts when we put forth the legislation to stay on the daylight savings times because we thought at that time and the citizens I was hearing from thought that was a better strategy. But obviously that strategy uh, included California and Washington to try to address what Senator Hansel was addressing there, but also took action by Congress. We knew that at the time. Well, every year since we passed that legislation, I have all these people saying, so John, I thought we switched to daylight savings time. Why are we switching our clocks back and forth? So they haven't forgot that what we said we were going to do, and they, don't, and they don't understand. So wait a minute, I thought you said you passed a law in Oregon, which we did, but we didn't get Congress approval and California didn't do it. So I've reached the point, I think that a lot of people, let's just quit going back and forth, let's just pick the time. And part of the reason, my understanding is, part of the reasons for the standard time, it does not take approval of Congress. We already have the authority to be able to do that. Doesn't address the issue, Senator Hensel, that you brought up, but I think we could work on that. But from my standpoint and my citizens now, even those that supported going to daily at same time have just said, John, this is enough. Let's just decide what the clock is and not go back and forth. Some of us, Still have cl old clocks that we don't know how to reset, frankly. You know? <laughs> They're really only good half of the, half of the year. Exactly right. <laughs> so you got to make an, a calculation in your mind about <laughs> the time really is. So I'm just here. I just think it's time okay. we do this. I think most citizens would agree. They're, they're over whether it has to be daylight or standard, but standard time gives us a chance to do it without all the other stuff. I just think we should move forward. Okay. Any, yeah, Senator Steiner. I, I don't know when the right time is. I'm actually, I think, the sponsor of this bill also. And um, I would say two things. The first is, from a medical perspective, changing time twice a year is really bad. I've heard that. Incidents of car accidents, incidents of heart attacks, incidents of all sorts of bad stuff happen every year for a week or more, let alone the family inconveniences such as Senator Thatcher referred to um, for babies getting their sleep schedules messed up. So from a health perspective, mm. yeah, me too, but <laughs> maybe I'm just under one, I age one. Um, from a health perspective, it's the right thing to do is stick on one time. So when we were running the bill in 2019 to just go to daylight savings time, I initially thought, okay, fine, we'll just pick that time and go. Then I learned about a real issue for the Jewish community, which is obviously very important to me, 
which is that in the winter when the sunrise is so late, it's very hard to do morning prayers, which need to be done for some people. They only want to do it in a community, right, in a congregation of 10 people or more. Um, and you can't do it until after sunrise. And the service is run between half an hour and 45 minutes, depending on the day of the week. And people have to get to work. Mm -hmm. So if the sun, if we're on daylight savings time in the middle of the winter and the sun doesn't rise till 8.30 in the morning, that makes it almost impossible for people who really care about doing this the right way to pray with a community on the weekdays. And so much to my regret, I had to vote no on the bill in 2019 and talked a little bit about why I voted no. Um, it was an issue. So that's why I signed on to this bill. I am a little concerned because I didn't realize that this, I, I should have paid closer attention, I didn't realize this didn't require federal approval and we could do it in a way that separated us out from Washington and uh, California because obviously having our border states that are on the same, that look like they should be in the same time zone in a different time for two thirds of the year, because right now daylight savings time is almost two thirds of the year, um, is is something of a problem. So I, I am a little hesitant to do this if our neighbors to the north and south don't do it. But philosophically, picking a time, sticking with it, and preferably standard time seems like the way the world's supposed to work. Okay. It's more of a comment than a question, Madam Chair, but thank you for indulging me. Thank you. Um, any other further questions for the legislature? We do have a couple of people signed up that I think we may have some more technical expertise, yeah. it sounds like. Thank okay. You. Thank, thank you. you so much. Sure. Um, I've got uh, Dr. JP is remotely. Hello, doctor. Or oh, Mr. I called uh, you a doctor. I made you a doctor. Yeah, yeah. Congratulations. Hey, uh, hello. Yes, I, I am Mr. JP. Um, and excuse me, I've I've never used uh, Microsoft Teams before. I, I see no video. Um, oh. Is, is we, that okay? Uh, we see you. All right. Well, we'll just proceed with that. <laughs> uh, yes, honorable chair and committee members, uh, thank you very much for uh, permitting me to speak. Um, and thank you to the bill authors for submitting this bill. My name is JP. Last name is spelled P-E-A. I'm the president of the nonprofit Save Standard Time. We're working in uh, states and provinces across North America. Um, we support ending clock change provided it is by keeping permanent standard time and not permanent daylight time. Daylight saving time is a false clock and keeping it permanently is worse than clock change. It's federally prohibited for good reason. It would make it dark past eight in the morning for four to five months in your state, uh, dark as late as nine or 9.30 in the morning in January in your state. When it was when permanent daylight time was tried in the 1970s, uh, it failed, uh, it cost lives, disrupted businesses. Um, it's failed in other times and places around the world. Uh, and we've been defeating bills in California twice in the last two years for permanent daylight time uh, in Nevada and Alberta and many others. And in Congress, we've been holding up their bill for four years. Permanent standard time, which is what SB 1090 2 does, and also HB 3102. Permanent standard time is the real time defined from where the sun is positioned in the, in the sky. It's the natural time. Some call it God's time. It balances the morning and the evening light, which helps us wake in the morning, helps us fall asleep in the evening. And that better sleep health translates into better mental health, better physical health, better safety, education, and economy, especially for children, especially for essential workers, especially for people who have to work in the morning, or work outdoors. And as mentioned, it's very important for uh, those who worship in the morning, uh, as uh, as in some communities of, of Jews and Muslims. Um, the, the idea of permanent standard time being best for health and safety is not just my opinion, but the opinion of the American Medical Association, the American Academy of Neurology, the National Safety Council, the American Academy of Sleep Medicine, the National PTA, many nonprofits, also writers from the Oregonian, from Bloomberg, even from Cato and the Daily Wire, there is broad bipartisan support for permanent standard time. It is the clock that's been observed in Arizona, Hawaii, all five US territories and most nations for many, many decades. The nation of Mexico just last year got rid of daylight saving time and has adopted permanent standard time. And there are more bills than ever in the US for permanent standard time. 
it's being uh, considered in. Uh, the, the, uh, I'm losing. I'm, I'm forgetting my list right now. But I'm certain that if you were to pass this bill, Washington and California, Idaho, Nevada would quickly follow you. If you want, you can delay the effective date until they actually agree to follow you. Uh, and finally, it is federally approved. There would be no waiting on gridlock Congress to approve what you want to do. So, again, please, I would ask for approval on Senate Bill 1090-2 and daylight saving time as soon as possible. And I'd be glad to answer any questions you might have. Thanks again. Colleagues? All right, let me ask a question. Right now, if we did this bill right now and changed immediately, we would be on a different time zone than California. No, half of the year, we'd be on a different time zone than California and Washington. Is that correct? Yes, California um, is uh, on the schedule of flipping clocks, uh, springing forward and falling back, as is Washington and uh, 47 other states. Uh, only Arizona, Hawaii and the five territories are on permanent standard time. But if you were to go to permanent standard time, I'm certain they would follow you into it um, as quickly as they could. There are legislative calendars to be considered, of course. but. Uh, when you look at polls, uh, it's between 70 and 90 percent of Americans want to stop changing the clocks, and about a third want standard, a third want daylight, and a third don't care, just stop the madness. So there's a lot of confusion about um, what is medically preferred and what is federally approved, and I believe that once Oregon demonstrates um, that it can be done, uh, many states will follow you. But we, but we still have a a separate time zone for this. I, I was a little bit confused by Senator Hansel's question. Would Ontario be in a, a different time? So in most of your state, you are on Pacific right. time. So this bill would put you in Pacific Standard Time year round. Got it. Uh, and then uh, the, the county on the southeastern border is on Mountain Time. So they would be on Permanent Mountain Standard Time. So, so you would be aligned with the states around you as you're accustomed to being aligned in the winter months, November, December, January, February, and half of March. Uh, and then you would have, uh, if they did not follow you, then you would be an hour off in the summer half of the year. Um, so if you'd be willing to put up with that confusion for say one year, uh, then that would be the case. Uh, if you want to avoid that confusion for one year, then you could include a contingency. Uh, this will take effect when Washington agrees to do the same, and that would give time for them to catch up. Okay. I had Senator Manning first, but Senator Hansel, is this in response to that? Or? Yeah. Senator Manning. So, uh, listening uh, to this, I'm thinking about a lot of travel. You know, I'm going from... Uh, Eugene to LaGuardia. Uh, what does that look like in terms of travel time? Right now, we're going through time zones. You know, we're going from uh, Pacific to Mountain to Central to East Coast time and stuff. What does that look like? What does that look like in terms of uh, our neighbors in Canada? Uh, let's look at uh, Alaska. Uh, what is the impact of that on a lot? I'm not, I'm not certain that uh, I'm, I'm quite here for this at this point. Sorry, Dr. P. Go ahead, Mr. Yes, Mr. P. Yes, thank you for the question. Um, so uh, I, for example, live in Arizona and we are permanently on mountain standard time. Um, so it's really great. Everybody loves being on permanent standard time here. But yes, it is temporary, temporarily confusing, wondering uh, is New York two hours or three hours ahead of us for which part of the year? Um, but I do believe that if you were to pass this bill, then many states would follow suit. We have a lot of, uh, we sort of have a Mexican standoff right now where everybody's waiting to see what everybody else is going to do first. British Columbia is waiting on Washington State. Um, you know, is is Oregon uh, waiting on Washington and California? That's your decision to make. But we have a lot of people saying we want to make this change, but we want to wait for someone else to do it first. So uh, I think that if Oregon can pass this bill, 
other states will see, oh, this wasn't so hard to do, we want to pass it right away too. So you would have the question of, do you want to make the leap right away or do you want to have some kind of delay on when it takes effect? Right. Thank you. Um, Senator Hansel. Uh, thank you, Mr. P. Uh, wouldn't we actually, if we were on Pacific Standard and uh, the part of the state, uh, Ontario, Oregon area, if they moved to daylight, uh, to mountain daylight savings, we'd be two hours different, would we not? But they wouldn't move. Right. Um, the um, the submitted amendment from the author uh, dash two would apply this uh, DST exemption, this restoration of permanent standard time to the entire state. And um, I, re I certainly recommend uh, that, uh, doing it for the entire state rather than just one portion or the other. Ooh, I didn't realize that. So Ontario no, so would go into Ontario it? Would be, Ontario would still be on Idaho time. Yeah. Is what he's saying. What he's saying. It would but be exactly the same as we are now. It would be standard. You wouldn't switch back and forth like we do now. No, would, no. I, oh. Oh, but, but if Idaho doesn't switch. Right. I mean, if we go ahead and do what we right, propose yes. to do on our own, then would we not actually be two hours difference from our citizens in Ontario when they move <laughs> to daylight savings time Idaho? Mountain. Right. So um, if, if Oregon stays on permanent t uh, standard time, uh, then uh, most of the state is on permanent Pacific standard time. Uh, the eastern uh, portion is on permanent mountain standard time. Uh, and then for the winter months, you're aligned as you're accustomed to being aligned with your neighboring states. But then come the middle of March, uh, parts of Idaho would spring forward from mountain standard to mountain daylight and there would be a one hour time difference there where they would not be accustomed to that. Um, and the same thing for the western portion of Oregon. Washington might spring forward in March. California and Nevada might spring forward in March. And they would be an hour ahead of you. But I doubt they would keep that situation. They would very quickly pass laws to move into permanent standard time to keep up with you and follow up with you. So, Senator Steiner. apropos Senator Manning's question, obviously the net travel time wouldn't change, but in fact, Not in theory, if New York didn't change, for example, in the summer, we would be four hours behind New York instead of three hours behind New York, which has challenges um, for many of us who either do business or have a lot of family on the East Coast, um, uh, and makes adjusting to travel over there a little harder, but we can do it, just a little bit more challenging. Um, I, I mean, your point, Mr. P, about the fact that um, there's sort of a um, catch-22 situation here where everybody's waiting for somebody else to make the first move um, is good. And I, I, frankly, the best thing would be for Congress to just switch us all back to standard time no matter what, um, the entire country. But it doesn't sound like they're interested in doing that for reasons I don't quite understand. Um, so, and I, I appreciate your point that other states around us would quickly follow suit. I just don't know that we can count on it. And I think if I were going to support this, which I would like to philosophically, I, I would need to see a delay of at least 12 to 18 months to have us, have a, the other states have a chance to catch up so that we don't have this problem with Idaho, California, and Washington in particular, personally. If, if, I, if I may re respond? Yes, go ahead. Uh, yes, I, I certainly appreciate that concern. And um, it's, it's usually, it's generally my advice um, that a bill uh, includes a clause uh, to make the effective date contingent on uh, a neighboring state, in this case, Washington. Uh, passing the same law, um, and that can help alleviate any concerns for possible confusions. Um, I would not want lack of that clause to cause the bill to fail. I'd rather this bill move forward. Uh, and so, if it is, con if it needs to be contingent on a neighboring state passing the same law, or if it needs to be delayed by a certain number of months, um, whatever it takes to get the the bill moving forward, rather than just uh, dying and and this being punted to another year, uh, I think we, we would want to avoid that. All right. 
Okay, thank you, Mr. P. I appreciate your testimony. Uh, let's see. I've got Mark Chenard. Yes, that's correct. Hello. Uh, my name is Mark Chenard. I'm an undergraduate uh, at Portland State University studying biology and neuroscience. Um, I'm also a volunteer at the uh, nonprofit Northwest Noggin, um, which is a neuroscience education outreach um, group. And Northwest Noggin um, and I strongly support Bill SB 1090 based on um, current neuroscience research of sleep and developing brains. Um, so my work, um, my honors thesis that I'm working on right now is about um, a movement shifting the start time uh, for high schools in the Vancouver Public School District, uh, which currently start at 7.30 a.m., to a safer and more healthy start time of 8.45 a.m. And um, I think that SB uh, 1090 um, is very, very pertinent to the notion of high schoolers and adolescents or those in their second decade of life um, getting better sleep. Um, and basically, um, I think that this is more of a health issue than is often considered. And I think that the, the health benefits that could be reaped from embracing permanent standard time shouldn't be understated. Um, the reason I compare uh, the start time, school start times to permanent standard time versus daylight savings time is that um, basically both issues are often very like considered very like logistical issues um, and the health aspects are, are under examined. Um, and in this case, like with permanent standard time uh, versus daylight, daylight savings time. Um, I think someone mentioned that uh, waking up in the dark is is not healthy um, because um, morning sunlight kind of sets our internal clock and uh, regulates our mood and melatonin release later at night. Um, and I, I just wanted to give like a, a student perspective on this issue and um, basically suggest that uh, adolescents are are a population that um, are pretty vulnerable to time changes and that permanent standard time is healthier for them. All right. Um, thank you so much, Mr. Chenard. We appreciate your testimony. Um, okay. With that, I, that's all we have on um, public testimony for Senate Bill 1090. With that, I am going to close the public hearing on Senate Bill 1090.